Now we have drawn the marginal cost curve as, as a straight line and, and strictly upward sloping. That need not uh, be the case. Uh, it could be the case that when a firm starts out uh, production, it incurs a very high a relatively high marginal cost. But as it uh, applies more and more resources to a fixed unit of some other resource, uh, it's quite possible that, that um, uh, the firm achieves benefits of, of specialization of, say, uh, labor, and in which case the output expands disproportionately to the input. In the textbook, we talk about tomato production and that there are four different activities associated with producing tomatoes. If one person is assigned to produce the, the tomato, tomatoes, the person is going to have to um, uh, dig the holes in, in the row, then go back and pick up the tomatoes, then go back and pick up the, the bucket of water, go back and uh, then start uh, covering the tomatoes up. If, in fact, uh, you uh, have one person on the field, you may have a very high cost of production. And another person, and the cost of production can go, can go down simply because uh, an individual need not be going back and forth along the road, picking up the plants, picking up the bucket, covering them up, and so forth. And the marginal cost of production can, can descend as more and more labor is, is applied. But there is a basic rule in, in economics that says, that goes by the name of the law of diminishing returns, and that is that uh, as more and more of one resource labor is added to a fixed quantity of another uh, resource, call it land, then at some point, this point, point A in this graph, uh, the additional output from each additional labor input is going to diminish. If you get less and less additional output per labor uh, applied to the production process, it stands to follow uh, that the marginal cost of production uh, will be going up. This is the point of diminishing uh, marginal uh, returns. And we have it specified at Q1. It might not be there. It could, in fact, go down even further and then up. Uh, but all we know is the general shape of the curve is going to look like this. Well, we can then begin to take a price equal to uh, P1. If the price is P1, and the firm does not can sell as much as it wants to at a price of uh, P1, then that firm is going to optimize or maximize production at a quantity of Q2. The reason is that the price is now equal to marginal revenue or the additional revenue. On the first unit, the firm gets a uh, price of P1, adds revenue equal to uh, P1. The marginal cost is down here, MC2, and of course the firm makes a profit equal to that one on that particular unit. Now on the second unit, the firm gets a marginal revenue or price equal to P1. The marginal cost falls because of the benefits of specialization of labor. There's even more profit to be made. There's profit to be made on, on these units, this unit, and even on this unit. The marginal cost of production is, of course, rising at this point and continues to rise. But notice that the price exceeds the marginal cost of each of these units uh, all the way up to a quantity of Q2. So profits are rising. They're rising by uh, different amounts, and they begin to contract as we move uh, toward that point. Moral of the story is, is that the firm should produce up to Q2. It should not go beyond uh, Q2 because the marginal cost of production is then uh, MC3. The additional revenue is P1, and there is a loss on that unit uh, equal uh, to that. I guess I should say, actually, a marginal loss. Moral of the story is that the firm should maximize uh, uh, profits where the marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. This is an extraordinarily important rule uh, in, in microeconomics. In this case, uh, the price is also equal to uh, the marginal uh, cost. 
Uh, in these uh, video modules uh, to come, uh, we will be returning repeatedly to the rule that a firm should expand production until the marginal cost uh, is equal to uh, the marginal revenue. Uh, this rule applies to competitive firms, but it also applies with equal force uh, to firms with monopoly power. Uh, thank you very much for being with me.